How much money do you need for your Spanish non-lucrative visa application or renewal in 2023? I don't know. Well, stick around and I'll tell you. And I'll give you some top tips on how to present your renewal documents to immigration. Welcome to You Too Spain. Let's dance. <music> I'm Scats, and this is Walter Ego. Hello. What about me? Welcome back, Tommy. Everybody, this is Tommy. Oi, oi. Right, let's get straight into what you need to know. The figure for how much money you need for your non-lucrative visa for Spain has gone up from the beginning of 2023. Does it do that every year? Nope. Sometimes it stays the same for a few years. It depends on certain things like inflation, for example. But it's worth knowing that the figure might increase because the majority of people who apply for the non-lucrative visa are going to be renewing their residency at the beginning of year two and year four. So they should take into account the possibility of an increase. How do they work out how much you need? It's based on a system called EPREM. And it's basically the amount people need to live on without needing state benefits. How much has it gone up then? EPREM is now €600 Euros per month. That's a nice round figure. It is. That's very handy. I can do the sums without a calculator now. Yes, indeed. So all you need is €600 Euros a month? No. For the NLV, you need four times EPREM for a single applicant, then an extra one times EPREM for each additional family member. So it's €2,400 a month on your own, or 3000 for a couple. You've got it, Walter. And just add another €600 Euros each for children. Do I need to have that in the bank? Or can it be income? You can either have it in the bank, or it can be what's called passive income or it can be a combination of the two. What's passive income? Well, because the NLV is designed for people who are retired or those who can afford to live on savings, you're not allowed to do any paid work. So passive income is things like pensions or investments or money from rental property, for example. So if I'm on my own and I've got a state pension and a private pension worth a total of 2,400 a month, do I need any savings in the bank? No, but the more proof you have of your financial stability and that you are future-proofed against emergencies, the easier it is for immigration to grant you your visa and your renewals. You said that the renewal is at year two and year four. Does that mean I need twice as much to cover the two years? That's a very interesting question, and it's caused a few arguments recently in different regions of Spain. The important thing to understand is the monthly amount that you need and how recurring passive income is counted. What do you mean? OK, so if you're getting your €2,400 in pension every month and you can prove you're getting it and will continue to get it, then you don't need to double that amount for your renewal because you'll be getting it for 24 months instead of 12 months. So it's kind of already double. That makes sense. What about if I move before retirement and I'm just living on savings? In that case, you have to make sure that you've got the equivalent in savings of 2,400 a month. Multiply that by 24 months and you get 57,600 euros for a single applicant. And if you're a couple, it's 3,000 euros times 24, which is 72,000. So if I just leave 58,000 euros in a bank for five years, that would be all right. As long as you bear in mind that if you're just living on savings, you need money to live on as well. And you'll need to show immigration where that money is coming from in case you're somehow hiding an income. What about if you've got pension and savings? How do they work out how much you need? Good question, Tommy. I think the best way to work it out is by looking at it as a monthly amount rather than a yearly amount. So, Let's say you're single and your pensions come to an easy round figure of €1,400 Euros a month. That leaves a shortfall of €1,000 a month to make up in savings. So for the first year, you'd need €1,000 times 12 months, which is 12000 And for the renewals, you'll need €1,000 times 24 months, 
which is 24,000. So if I can live off my pension without spending my savings, all I need is 24,000 euros sitting in a bank for five years. That would do it as long as Eprem doesn't go up in the meantime. I've heard that in some parts of Spain, they're saying you only need one year's worth of money. Now, that is the thing that's been causing arguments. I keep hearing claims, but so far no one has shown me any proof yet of anyone getting their renewal with less than the required monthly amount in savings alone, or a combination of savings and passive income. So, I'm going to ask this question to anyone watching. Has anyone you know got through their renewal with either 12 months worth of savings or a combination of enough passive income to survive and only 12 months worth of savings? I challenge you to show me the case notes if you think what I'm saying is wrong. You can redact them if you want to hide personal information. Just show me how it's possible, please. And in what region is this happening? Show me the proof or stop the generalizations. And if the rules have changed, which there's no evidence of in official documents from what I've seen, why has no one shown any official proof of this? Calm down, Scots. You're getting all let up. Sorry, Walter, but it's a bit frustrating. People are being told sweeping black and white statements like the rules have changed and it's possible to get renewals with only one year's worth of money. But where does it say that in law? There could be hundreds or even thousands of people hearing that and assuming that's the rule for everybody or misinterpreting it. And as you know, every application and renewal is individual. The circumstances are different. They're all open to interpretation and each region and office has their ways of dealing with the situation. If you go around telling everybody they don't need two years worth of money, when that information is based on a minority of individual cases with different circumstances, perhaps only in a small part of Spain, then what's going to happen? Think about it. They'll all get their hopes up, they all come to Spain, and after a year, they could be refused their renewal and have to leave. People rely on information they get online. Isn't it better that we all work together to give people a realistic idea of what it takes to move to and live in Spain? Have a drink, son. Are you finished now? Well, I did say I'd give you some tips on how to present your renewal financial documents. You did? Let's have a top tips list then. Number one. The first thing to remember is to put yourself in the position of the officer looking at your documents. If you present them in a clear and straightforward way, they'll understand them better. And if you make sure you have everything they need, it will be much better too. If you don't get it right first time, you only have 10 days to produce the extra documents. Number two. Documents printed from online accounts can be rejected. They like to see stamped bank statements or documents that can be verified with a CSV or QR code. Number three. Make sure it's clear that the documents belong to you. For example, bank statements should have your full name, not just initials. Number four. Check which documents need translating and whether they need an apostille stamp. Number five. Make sure you have fresh, updated documents for your renewal. Generally, immigration won't take into consideration the documents you used for your initial application. Number six. Your renewal process will be much easier if your wealth and income are in a bank in Spain. Number seven. Don't forget what I said before. Eprem can change each year. So bear it in mind when you're planning ahead. Number eight. Here's a table of the minimum monthly and the total amounts you need for your first application and for your renewal. As you can see, this includes single applicants, couples and families with up to three children. If you have more than that, just add 600 euros to the monthly amount for each one. Multiply that by 12 for the middle column and 24 for the right-hand column. Easy peasy. Too many numbers. That's all now, Tommy. You can relax. Thank you. Marvellous. Is everyone happy? Yes, thank you. I'm extremely happy. Excellent. Then it's worth clicking on the like button and subscribing. OK, then can we do the dance again? Why not? Peace and love. Peas and fluff. Oi, oi. Let's dance.